Good evening and welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, February 19th, 2013. I'd ask everyone in attendance to rise and join us in singing O Canada. Thank you to the National Film Board for the images of our country and to our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio. Uh, we move on to the adoption of previous council meeting minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. Councillor Wong. Thank you, Mayor Logan. Oh, holy smokes, where did that come from? <laughs> Two years ago. Mayor Given. <laughs> uh, I move that the uh, minutes of the city council meeting held February 4th, 2013 be adopted. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Any discussion or debate on the minutes? Did anyone note any errors or omissions? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. I look for a motion for the adoption of the agenda. Councillor Crocan. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move Council adopt the agenda as presented with the addition under uh, number 8 of 8.1. It's a recommendation to the Aquaterra Board and 8.2, the Competitive Sports and Grand Prairie Airport Commission appointments. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. So the uh, agenda with the, the addition of those two items. Uh, any discussion or debate on the agenda? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Um, that brings us to the delegation portion of the agenda. We have um, one a piece of scheduled business to, today to um, make a recognition of a long-term community volunteers with our annual George Repco Award. Uh, since 1987, the George Repco Outstanding Achievement Award has served to recognize individuals who significantly contributed in a voluntary capacity to the improvement of the quality of life within our community in the areas of recreation, culture, or social services. The award was named after George Repco, a former mayor of the city, who himself made a significant contribution in terms of time and effort to Grand Prairie. Previous winners have included Perky McCullough, Roy Borstad, Isabel Campbell, Doug Clarkson, Ernie Radburn, Bill and Margaret Bowes, Jenny Titro, Marv Bird, Patricia Larder, Kathy Harper, Doreen McDonald, Steve Cooper, Mike Townsend, Bob Normando, Doreen Latham, Oscar Blay, Ray and Joan Jobberty, Dale Williams, Wally Stokes, Linda Smith, Lee Goldie, Travis McNally, Gordon and Hazel Bloomfield, Jerry Partition, Lynn and Donna Coulter, and most recently, Dan Gorman. It's my honor this evening to recognize two more citizens of Grand Prairie who have given a long-standing voluntary service to the community. On behalf of Council and the Citizens of Grand Prairie, I'm pleased to be able to present the George Ripka Outstanding Achievement Award to Mr. Jim Brooks and Mrs. Sharon Brooks.
Before I uh, uh, ask Jim and Sharon to come forward, uh, I'd like to say a few words about their contribution to the community. Uh, when I went back there, they said, we don't know why we're being recognized for this. And I said, well, let no good deed go unpunished. You help a community for a long time, uh, and eventually somebody's going to recognize you for it. <coughs> Jim and Sharon Brooks have been volunteering in our community for well over 20 years. The majority of their efforts have been at the Grand Prairie Museum. However, Jim is also involved at the Grand Prairie Live Theatre, the Ovations Dinner Theatre, the South Peace Regional Archives, and the Heritage Discovery Centre. In the early years of the Grand Prairie Museum, Sharon was one of the major forces behind the paper collections records and did most of the hand-drawn pictures for each of the artifacts in the collection, at that time putting in many, many hours. She continues to help with many different tasks in the collections department, and she and Jim are always a part of the spring work bee to get the Heritage Village ready for visitors. Sharon has also assisted the South Peace Regional Archives with different research projects over the years. Jim is a retired, certifi is a retired certified electronics and communications technician who received his training in the Canadian military. For the last 20 some years, he's taken his skills and expertise to the next level by enthusiastically giving back to his community and inspiring others to follow in his footsteps. Each and every day, Jim makes himself available to the museum, repairing buildings, artifacts, exhibit construction, restoration work, and everything else asked of him. In 2005, the museum completed a major expansion that included a completely rebuilt main gallery. Jim worked for five days a week for four months on the completion of the new gallery exhibits and was instrumental in ensuring it opened on time. Jim volunteers with the different theaters working on set production, lighting, and anything else that he might be asked to do. The Real Shorts Film Festival also benefited from his time and exper expertise. The South Peace Regional Archives and the Heritage Discovery Center benefit from his skill for repairing ailing equipment. Jim and Sharon Brooks work quietly in the background with no expectation of recognition. Our community has been changed for the better because of their unwavering commitment and leadership. They're an inspiration and teach us that one person, or a couple of people, can have a major impact on his or her community. Jim and Sharon have demonstrated a legacy of long and outstanding service to the community, and I, along with members of council, would like to thank you and give you our congratulations for your service. Thanks so much. Jim and Sharon, would you come up and join me up front? Chairman Sharon, again, uh, on behalf of Council, thank you so much for your contribution to the community. We certainly appreciate it. So this is the delegation portion of our agenda. It's an opportunity for anybody to come forward and address Council on any community-related matter. Um, I see that there are some folks in the, in the crowd, and so if there's anybody that'd like to come and address Council, now's an opportunity to come forward uh, to the present, presenter's table and introduce yourselves. I see someone coming forward. Please make yourself welcome. Be nice, John. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Alex. 
Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. My name is Elaine Garrow and I am the Peace Region Economic Development Alliance Chair. And I wish to present to the Grand Prairie City Council a concern that the Preeti Executive have with regard to a recent letter we received from the City Council advising us that the City would be withdrawing from Preeti effective March 31st, 2013. As you're all likely aware, Preeti has been in existence for more than 10 years and during that time has contributed greatly to the economic well-being of the Peace Region <laughs> and more specifically the City of Grand Prairie. This was achieved by the collaboration of some 25 municipalities, two community futures, two colleges who have worked together to advance the region. We have worked on numerous projects including PERMA, which 72% of the members came from the City of Grand Prairie, P2P, unmanned vehicles, reel to reel, and numerous workshops and seminars, many of them held right here in Grand Prairie. Perhaps our most aggressive project was the development of the Center for Research and Innovation, which was created by Preda through the Innovation <coughs> Network, a project Preda has worked on since its inception and until it was assumed by the Grand Prairie Regional College under their mandate two years ago. I am comfortable in stating that if it had not been for the work of Preda and 25 municipalities, CRI would not be here today. This was done with considerable work and cost by Preda and all of its members. In fact, in the last three years alone, $597,031 was channeled to CRI and its projects, including an injection of more than $45,000 to the Grand Prairie Regional College in administration fees alone. This does not include all the other projects Preta has worked on to the benefit of the City of Grand Prairie. Grand Prairie's investment in Preta is $25,000 per year. This $600,000 is an eight-time return investment of Grand Prairie's membership fee in the last three years. If the average Grand Prairie taxpayer pays $2,500 in property taxes, then that return is equivalent to what 210 homes on your tax roll paid in proper property taxes are on an average of 70 homes per year. In fact, Preda's cash injection into the CRI over the past three years is double the entire membership fee Grand Prairie has paid in the course of its membership since Preda's existence. While the CRI is important, Preda would not have unfunded it to the extent if it had not felt that way. Its impact is truly only in the Grand Prairie area. The termination letter Preda received stated that the City of Grand Prairie will focus on regional economic development through the CRI, the Community Futures, and the Pipestone Museum. As a board member of Peace River Community Futures, I can tell you that the Grand Prairie CF only serves up to the north boundary of the County of Grand Prairie. The balance is Peace River. And while Preda has supported the Dinosaur Museum and will continue to support this exciting project, it too is based in the vicinity of the City of Grand Prairie. The reality is that the City of Grand Prairie pulling out of Preda sends a message that while they are grateful to Preda and 25 municipalities that help fund the creation of the CRI, all the projects that benefit the city and the city will not reciprocate the regional spirit displayed by the municipalities around it. The financial investment of all these communities is to the benefit of Grand Prairie is important. But you cannot forget the value of working together in advocating for the North. Should the government of Alberta impose a sales tax, it would be Grand Prairie that would suffer from the loss of BC shoppers as well as an investment in the region. When Grand Prairie wants to see federal expansion through the introduction of the Canadian Broker Services and a full service passport office or a brokerage for an international good, they turn to their neighbours for support. I am here today not to ask you to reconsider. I am, however, here to ask how you came to that decision despite the magnitude of the investment that Preda and its members have directed to the City of Grand Prairie. 
you feel you have not benefited from your membership, your letter stated in the letter for the Grand Prairie City Council gave, it was under careful consideration. I would like to ask your council, considering your municip municipality appointed rep has not been to a management board since January 28, 2011, what was the careful consideration so that I can share with our membership so that no one else feels that they have not benefited from PREDA? Okay. Thanks very much for your presentation. I don't know if uh, the gentleman had anything to say or if they wanted to introduce themselves. Maybe if we could just get their names as well. Mm -hmm. so we've got them uh, Ron Long to the Mayor of the Village of Berwyn, back to on the Executive Board of Freedom. Yeah. Thanks, Ron. Evan Slabway, Councillor with Northern Sunrise. Th thanks very much. <clears throat> appreciate having you here and uh, appreciate uh, the presentation and the concern. Um, I can uh, speak on behalf of Council when I say that at the start of this term, this Council came in focused on uh, finances. We asked administration to examine all organizations uh, that were external to the city in which we had a membership. Uh, through the course of that, we identified uh, a number of different organizations where our membership has changed, uh, where we've had a relook at uh, the ability of the organization to meet the objectives uh, that it had stated. And I think specifically in the case of PREDA, uh, there's a lot of concern around uh, the provincial government withdrawing its investment in the, in the RITAs. Um, my understanding is that there have been uh, others across the province that have uh, recently ceased activity. And uh, we felt that uh, the City of Grand Prairie had its best opportunity to make investments in economic development uh, through a different model. Uh, certainly we still look at every opportunity to participate regionally, um, but we feel that uh, particularly with the loss of the provincial funding um, and that support from the province, uh, that PREDA wasn't going to be the best investment of our city taxpayers' dollars. Okay, so I beg to differ. If that was your concern, we received $100,000 from the province and we are guaranteed funding to 2014. And the government has already told us that they do economic development is a major priority with the government. We sit and we meet with the ministers and if you had given us a call, we would have told you that our, in, our, in our strategic plan, we will be self-sufficient in three years. Government funding is always a pleasure to get, but we now are doing work for municipalities at a better rate. And I really truthfully wish that if that was your concern, that you would have contacted myself, which you know who I am, and you would have come to us first, instead of surmising something that is not correct. Some of the readers have so chosen not to go forward, but they didn't do anything anyway. Blunt, they didn't. We have now had members of very large municipalities that are joining PREDA because we move forward. But having said that, if we aren't moving forward at the rate that you wish us to move forward, I would have appreciated some consideration and coming to our executive board. Sure. Well, we certainly appreciate the conversation excuse me, the conversations that we've been able to have with your executive director over the last while. Uh, we appreciate now that uh, the organization has one in place, that that'll be a benefit to the organization. And uh, the opportunity that we had to get a presentation about the plans of the organization at a public committee meeting uh, within the last six months or three months uh, was, I think, uh, an ad additional information that council based their decision on. Um, but I guess uh, uh, if you're looking for the why, I think that's the city of Grand Prairie's answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for making the presentation. Okay. I appreciate Thank you taking the time much. to be here. <coughs> yes, this is still the public delegation portion of our agenda. Is there anybody else that would like to come forward to speak to council on any community related matter? I see somebody else and they're moving up to the front. Come on down and uh, have a seat and introduce yourself. Uh, Carl Gagne. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Uh, thank you everybody for having me here. Uh, not a public speaker. Not as prepared as she was, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, hey, Carl. Just, uh, my fence has been spray painted numerous times. In the past, I'd say a year, I've repainted it, uh, I'd probably say six times, and it's a stucco fence. So it's a special paint, it costs a lot of money, and it's on a city easement. Just wondering what I could do, or what what is the solution to this? I have talked to uh, crime prevention and stuff like that. They're just giving me the runaround, so. Okay. 
Um, so I guess the first thing that I do is look to the Director of Community Safety to see if, uh, if we have any additional options. So you say you have worked with crime prevention, because my understanding was that they, uh, through their annual graffiti cleanup, uh, have uh, some funds to be able to purchase paint and that kind of thing. Uh, the, what they do is just uh, give you gloves and stuff and you have to provide your own paint and your everything like okay. that. So, okay. so it's still on my tab. What I'm asking, actually what I'm asking is uh, if we could get some lighting or something in there, because it's just repeatedly okay. happening. Okay. Um, so, uh, Director Walker, I don't know if you have a comment on that or if uh, you have a... Well, it's, I think we could certainly look at uh, options of lighting if... I, I'm not sure the area that you're speaking of. Uh, 9506 114th Avenue, that's 14. the house address. Okay. Um, I, I guess the other opportunity we've seen work in some areas is to use... Uh, actually to use graffiti ourselves. And uh, so it depends on what you want on your fence, you know, yeah. no, and, I, and how we, you paint it, so. I have talked, when Rhonda was, uh, I don't know if she's still there. No, uh, she's, she's uh, back she's to her regular okay. apartment. Yeah. I haven't sorry, I'll just, uh, sorry, Carl, I'll just get you. We kind of do it so that you're talking through me and then over to them. Okay, so sorry. Keep going this way. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No worries, no worries. So go ahead, you're saying. Uh, I have been uh, talking with Rhonda before, but then she moved from the mm -hmm. position. I didn't have a problem since, but then last night they came yeah. and graffiti again. And it's. Okay. Kind of a getting a pain in the butt, so okay. it's getting expensive too. Fair enough. Well, we appreciate you raising the issue. This is the whole reason why we have a crime prevention department, and we do have a specific focus on graffiti. Um, the way our agenda typically works is we deal with delegation presentations at the end. Uh, so if there's sort of council has an action coming out of this, which I imagine there might be, uh, that's when we deal with it. I do see that there's a few folks that are in the queue that might like to ask you questions. Some of the council members have questions for you. Yeah. Um, so we'll give them an opportunity to do that. Uh, Councillor McLean. Um, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Carl, I, I've gone to a few of the graffiti wipe-offs they've done, and they had to rub it really hard, and it didn't really come off. And uh, I like your suggestion, and I know we're going to be later on, but I've noticed an, an up to graffiti on different areas of the city lately, the last year and a half, two years. So it is an issue, and I hope debating it here uh, later in Council about this as well because I, I think just giving you gloves is probably not the way to clean it up. Yeah, okay. especially on, uh, I guess it's private fences and it's uh, a stucco fence. So you do need special paint to paint on stucco. It's not just a wood fence. And I'm the only one that's getting hit in my neighborhood. So, uh, and there is another easement like that too, up by Crystal Park School. It's kind of the same thing, sidewalk, in between and there's nothing going on there so but lighting in that area would really help out if, if that would be an option that'd be really great okay I see a couple others that want to ask questions yeah. as well I see Councillor Rice okay and I guess my question had to do with the lighting you say there's there's no lighting on that particular uh, easement absolutely not it is pitch black there okay right. so would that be uh, like uh, how much lighting do you think would act as a detriment? One light? Uh, that would be that would be more than what's there. Okay. Yeah, All definitely. right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, and I see Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. First of all, I really applaud you for coming and uh, addressing your concern here. We don't get to see many of you guys too often, so it's nice to see somebody that really cares about their community and. Is it like is it the same artwork all the time? If it's in the same spot, most likely it, it could be the same. Uh, this time activist. was different. Uh, oh. Last night was different artwork. Yeah, I do have pictures. I have uh, brought it to the RCMP uh, through the call center. I'm going to bring them pictures and bring some to the crime prevention that I have been in touch. But it's just starting to really get expensive on my part. Well, you're doing the right thing by, you know, recovering it right away and, and making sure that they're doing the best you can to, to help us help you deter the, the graffiti. So, so good job, and we hope we can help you out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, Carl, I don't see any other questions. Anybody else lined up to ask questions for you? Um, so unless there's anything else that you want to say, we really appreciate you making your presentation. Okay. Um, as I said, we deal with, so we've got kind of an agenda of stuff, and we deal with the uh, delegation portion at the end. Um, you're more than welcome to stay. Um, I can't sort of predict how long the meeting will go and how long it might be till we get there, um, but you can be in contact with the city afterwards. And what I would do, 
in any case, I'd maybe just ask you as you go by to leave your contact information with uh, Director Walker there um, that was speaking. And then that way, if you do have to leave, we'll be able to get a hold of you afterwards, okay? Absolutely. Thank okay. you very much. You bet. Thanks very much. Thank you. Take care. <clears throat> so as I said, this is the delegation portion of our agenda, um, opportunity for anybody to come forward and address council on any community-related matter. Uh, we've had a pretty diverse uh, uh, lineup tonight, and it looks like that's probably the end of it. And so, uh, but... Uh, do encourage the community if they have an opportunity or a need to come and speak to council. Uh, we do have that opportunity every uh, council meeting. So I'll close the delegation portion of the agenda. We do move on through public hearings, which we had none, unfinished business we had none. Uh, that takes us into reports and item 8.1, Aquaterra board appointments. Councillor Rice. I would move. Sorry. <laughs> I would move that council direct the mayor to approve that Jim Smith, Dave Verness, and Chris Lavoisier be reappointed to three-year terms to the Aquaterra Utilities, Inc. Board uh, of Directors, effective the 2013 uh, Aquaterra AGM. Um, in speaking to it, uh, this will be their uh, second term. Uh, some of those terms were fairly short, um, so uh, that's my motion. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. So uh, this is direction to the mayor to vote the city shares at the Aquaterra AGM. So that's why uh, this motion takes that format. Uh, any further discussion and debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, item 8.2, committee appointments. Um, Councillor O'Toole, would you like to make the uh, appointment for the uh, Combative Sports Commission? Yes, I would. Thank you very much, Mayor Giva. Um, as part of the uh, combative sports, we chose to use Vishal Sharma, and I recommend that we go with that. He's a resident of Sexman, pharmacist. Okay. okay, thanks very much. Now, do we have a, uh, a term recommendation on there? Uh, typically with these, we have a recommendation of a term. I'm sorry, I'm not sure if anybody has that at hand. Thanks, Councillor Rice. Audrey's got it. Sorry, uh, Ms. Turney? Thank, you. Ms. Thank Ms. you, Mayor Given. The appointment for Mr. Sharma would be for the remainder of a term ending December 31st, 2013. Okay, okay. thanks very much, Mr. Turney. Uh, so the motion would be to um, uh, appoint um, Mr. Sharma, uh, as noted from uh, Ms. Ross, to the remainder of a term. And it, December 31st, 2013. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion <coughs> carries. And Councillor O'Toole, I think you also uh, had the airport commissioner. Except for that one, we have one vacancy for a ter three year term ending December 31st, 2015. Thank you very much. I recommend that. Uh, Gord Graydon be appointed to the Grand Prairie Airport Commission for a three-year term ending December 31st, 2015. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you, and that motion carries. I believe that handled all of our additional reports um, that came on tonight. And that takes us into committee business. Item 9.1, 100th Anniversary Committee. Councillor Rice. I would move that Council receive the minutes of the 100th Anniversary Committee meeting held February 4th, 2013. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on the minutes? Did anyone note any errors or omissions? Anything out of place? Seeing nothing, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Rice, anything else to highlight from that set of minutes? Uh, rather exciting. Uh, Fire Chief uh, Lemieux attended our meeting, and he has managed uh, to uh, get the Alberta Fire Chiefs Association 2014 conference here in Grand Prairie. There will be approximately 500 registrants, and we'll be working with them. We had a couple of our new committee members joined us for the first time and thank council for those appointments uh, excellent additions the history book uh, is coming along sue uh, farrell haller has been chosen as the writer 
Um, Councillor O'Toole is exceeding expectations as he plans our 100 days of events and some rather unique and exciting ideas. We wanted the 100 days of events to be something different. Um, the homecoming event, uh, Councillor Gustafson has his committee and uh, they seem to have it well in hand. It's very gratifying. We sent out 32 letters to various uh, uh, area businesses asking if they might be interested in sponsorship activities and advising them that if they were we would prepare a list of a menu items of this if you will which we're beating on Mr. Ollinger to get ready uh, and we'll be taking and sitting down the response was immediate and uh, uh, just amazingly gratifying. So uh, we're moving along. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Time's winding down yeah. to 2014. Uh, item 9.2, the Public Works Committee. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'll move the Council receive the minutes of the Public Works Committee meeting held February 5th, 2013. Okay. Thanks very much, <coughs> Councillor Gustafson. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Everything looks to be in order and in place. Okay, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, Councillor Gustafson, I understand uh, 9.2.1, you're going to ask Councillor Rice to make that motion. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Councillor Rice? Okay, I would move that uh, Council adopt the 92nd Street Functional Study. And in speaking to it, uh, the functional planning study of 92nd Street from 68th Avenue to 116th Avenue. Um, is based on the city's transportation master plan that was developed in 2009 and this sets forth a basis for future detailed design and construction uh, staging to the ultimate build out of the roadway. And this is all projected around a 90,000 uh, population horizon. Um, there were two open houses uh, held and uh, dual left turn accesses between Park Road and 92nd Avenue, as well as restricted time of day parking along 92nd Street uh, near the intersection of 92nd Street and 104th Avenue, um, were some concerns that arose at, that, uh, at those open houses. And uh, the city is still monitoring traffic at the 92nd Street and 108th and 111th Avenue intersections. So this is a long way out. This is, as I said, won't proceed till about a 90,000 population. So. Thanks very much, Councillor. I, th I think it has uh, up to a 90,000 population. Yeah, absolutely. A couple of yeah. different horizons yeah. within that. Yeah. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. But it's not something that starts work this spring, is what I'm saying. Uh, discussion or debate, Councillor Gustafson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mary Given. Um, I believe the council needs to be just a, a little more consistent in in our turning lane procedures. Some we some we turn, some we don't. Um, I'm also not in a position to slow development or deny access to to public property. Also, the 90,000 population horizon for for me is is an undetermined number. It's it's based on over a five year span. Um, I think we, we could drastically narrow that down to a little sooner or later. Um, also, the safety and crash statistics, I believe, need to be presented. presented uh, that will most likely encourage a more, more confident decision for myself. Um, I also want to ensure undeveloped property uh, builds development and finishes uh, the subdivisions. Uh, also, in addition, the open houses here were done uh, in conjunction. And... Um, the comments were, were unclear, as, as stated in, in the report. I, I also believe we're heading in the right direction um, for this. However, I will not be supporting it at this time. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Any other discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none in the queue, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, Councillor Gustafson, 9.2.2. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'll move that Council eliminate eliminate the name Centennial Park from the Muskegee Park signage as it applies only to a portion of Muskegee Park. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Anything uh, further to say about that to introduce it? Um, yes.
Thank you. The name Centennial Park refers to the area of Muskegee Park that is the home of the pavilion, the museum, lawn bowling, amphitheater, pool, playground, and spray park, and skateboard park, and the parking lots. Uh, it approximately boundaries. It's, it approximate boundaries are 100th Avenue to the south and Reservoir Spillway to the north and the residential neighborhoods to the east and west. For all intents and purposes, it, it is, is a park within a park, um, a node of the greater Muskegee Park system. Uh, basically, this was back in, I can't recall what year, but a long time ago, we named a portion of the Centennial, of Muskegee Park, Centennial Park, and somehow the, we signed it. 1967, actually, we signed it at the entrances to Muskegee Park, so it's rather confusing for uh, especially anybody from out of town looking for Muskegee Park. People actually went into Muskegee Park asking where it is, and because the signs into our park say Centennial Park. So for that reason, <coughs> uh, we were we are eliminating the the name Centennial Park. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing no one ringing in, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councilor Gustafson, anything else you want to highlight from that set of minutes? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, we had a reservoir feasibility update. Yeah, we did. We did. Very important, very exciting news. Uh, Mr. Richard Sally, our, our project technologist, uh, reported to committee that uh, the, about the reservoir feasibility study that is, uh, that is underway, the project is underway, and the geotechnical analysis should be completed soon. Uh, this information will confirm whether islands can be built in the area rather than spending the money to transport that silt uh, away. The further away, the, the more it will cost to, to clean up the reservoir. Uh, Environment Canada and Department of Fisheries and Oceans have been informed, but further discussion will be required after the geotechnical analysis is complete. So progress, but uh, it'll still be a little while before we're able to really clean that up properly. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Um, that'll bring us to 9.3 in the Community Development Committee. Councillor Cookin. Thanks, Mayor Given. I move Council receive the minutes of the Community <coughs> Development Committee meeting held February the 5th, 2013. Thanks very much, Councillor Cookin. Did anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seven, eight, six, Seeing nothing, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councilor Crokin. Thanks, Mr. Given. I also move Council rescind motion 9.3.1 of October 1st, 2012, tender T68437-12. Just to speak to that briefly, uh, uh, Mayor Given, there was uh, some seasonal bad timing on this uh, request, so the bid was withdrawn. Okay. Thanks very much, uh, Councilor Crokin. Councilor Rice, uh, discussion or debate? Okay, so I'll be careful here because this may be a legal matter, but can someone just say, I submitted a bid, it was successful, I don't want to do the work because I made a mistake? Isn't that, isn't it, that a contract? I'll maybe defer <coughs> that, Mayor Given. If, uh, I, I see the uh, Director of Community Living has uh, got a red circle around his microphone. Mr. Roth? Um, Your, Your Worship, uh, there are certainly some legal matters that are being, that we have to consider uh, at this. Um, this particular issue, the contractor has withdrawn their their uh, their bid without getting into the legal technicalities. Uh, that's why we're coming forward to, to ask to with, have it withdrawn. Okay, one more question. So, mm -hmm. when we open a tender, this guy was number one and next is a somebody else that was slightly higher or some such thing. Do we go to number two, or do we have to retender? Mr. Roth, do you have information on that? As I recall, this was the only uh, oh. bid, and we the plan is to retender this uh, fairly shortly. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, Councilor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. I'm looking forward to the RFP going out on this, and uh, starting the facility is starting to get uh, worn down. And for the right time of doing it. Sometimes you can do things and pour concrete a lot better than in minus 30. So I think it might be appropriate to the timing. Thanks, Councilor McLean. Any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councilor Crokin. 
Thanks, Mayor Given. I also move council approve policy 201, recreational fees and charges as per attachment A, effective immediately. And just briefly, uh, the, this rate, uh, the rate increase was a slight adjustment. It's to our dry area, dry arena space. It's the no ice space. It was just uh, reflected a, a small adjustment in the, uh, in the per hour. Yeah, thanks, Councilor Crokin. I, I this, think this was adjusting uh, an error where the youth rate was going to be higher than the adult rate, and it was sort of an, an oversight. Is that, yes, is that correct? Yes, you're correct, Mayor Given. Thanks very much, Councilor Crokin. Uh, any further discussion or debate on the motion? Questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councilor Crokin. Thank you, Mayor Given. I also approve, uh, have Council approve an adjustment to the 2013 operational budget to reflect an increase of $25,201.50 for the Peace Library System per capita funding contract. And further, the adjustment for 2014 be referred to the 2014 interim budget process. It's pretty uh, self-explanatory, uh, Mayor Given. Thanks very much, Councillor Kogan. Um, any discussion or debate? I believe these relate to per capita increase just because the city's population increased and our contract says we pay them based on our population? Right? That's so, correct. So. Thanks, Councillor Crokin. Um, discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Crokin, anything else you want to highlight from that set of minutes? Uh, yeah, there was, there was one other item. There was a presentation by uh, um, Mr. Wollishan and uh, Michael Wheaton, president of the uh, Grand Prairie Tennis Club, and they had an extensive uh, a package that they presented us with. They want to get uh, the refurbishment of the club's tennis courts by the uh, armories uh, <coughs> just off 100th Street there, and uh, they're uh, pretty e exciting uh, a group, and they want to get it uh, resurfaced uh, and up and running uh, this year. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Um, so we move on to Environment Committee 9.4, Councillor Monroe. Thanks very much, Mayor Given. I'll move that uh, Council receive the minutes of the Environment uh, Committee meeting held February 11th, 2013. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? If everything looks to be in order, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Monroe. Thanks. I'll move that uh, Council approve policy 113, idle reduction uh, policy as amended. And just to speak briefly to this, uh, as most of you may recall, we uh, implemented the uh, uh, idle reduction policy across the city back in 2011. Uh, we uh, administration undertook a, a review of the policy with uh, uh, various managers throughout the organization and uh, determined some minor changes. Some of those changes uh, include uh, changing the temperature from zero degrees to 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, previous it was minus 10 to 25 degrees Celsius. Um, uh, prohibiting uh, motor vehicles and drive-through lineups. Uh, don't want to have uh, any of our uh, city vehicles in there. And then the exclusion of emergency vehicles. As I understand it, uh, quite a few of our emergency vehicles uh, uh, need to maintain uh, operation uh, in order to keep the batteries charged. Uh, so that uh, that is why they would be excluded from this. Um, uh, we have. Uh, it looks like we have full support from. Uh, administration and the uh, management teams that they met with uh, throughout the organization. So, okay. thank you. Thanks very much, Councilor Monroe. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Councilor Wong. Yes, thank you, Mayor Given. I think it's really important to stress that this is for city staff driving city vehicles. Thanks very much, Councilor Wong. Yeah, city vehicles or, or vehicles the city of Grand Prairie is paying for if somebody's claiming mileage or something. Absolutely. Councilor Monroe. Thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, I'll just uh, also add that uh, at this time there uh, there is no bylaw that uh, will be coming out of this uh, in any time soon, anyways. Thanks very much, Thank Council Monroe. Uh, any further discussion and debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, Council Monroe, anything else to highlight from that set of minutes? 
Uh, certainly, we had uh, a number of uh, delegations uh, come come for the uh, for the meeting. We had uh, the Peace Air Shed uh, Association, uh, or PASA, uh, came and gave us an update of uh, the air monitoring situation within the, within the uh, Peace Region. Uh, as well, uh, we had a uh, young man by the name of uh, Matthew Chard Chabonneau, who was at our last council meeting, uh, came and uh, presented to us. Uh, Aquaterra was also present. Uh, it was uh, it was quite uh, interesting to see some of the ideas that uh, Matthew was uh, bringing forward. Uh, I think uh, they were fairly well received from Aquaterra, uh, as well as uh, from the committee, and uh, uh, hope that he continues to uh, brainstorm ideas on how we can reduce waste uh, within the city. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councilor Monroe. Um, that brings us to item 9.5, which is just about our second to last item on our agenda. Uh, and Councillor Radburn, General Government Services Committee. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move Council receive the minutes of the General Government Service Committee meeting held on February 12, 2013. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, I would move Council approve the 2013 communications plan. If I could just uh, highlight uh, the four goals and some of the highlights uh, within the plan, Mayor Given, for, sure, for Council and for those uh, who are watching. Um, four goals in the, in the plan are to inc increase citizen engagement, to ensure the city has a positive image with all stakeholders, to ensure consistent and proactive external communication, to foster strong and effective internal communication. And some of the highlights that uh, Mr. Olinger presented in, in his report were uh, the plan includes uh, actions, timelines, and measures. Uh, we're initiating monthly online, uh, monthly online newsletter. We're incorporating city matters into uh, community connections. We're increasing uh, the number of surveys to gauge uh, resident opinions. We're promoting uh, strong linkages between departments. And we're enhancing the use of communication tools such as YouTube. So those are some of the highlights, but uh, we had a look at it twice. One, we provided some feedback. David uh, uh, did some uh, refining of the, of the plan, and we were very comfortable with it uh, at last committee meeting. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries, Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mr. Uh Take a big breath here, it's a long motion. Uh, I would move council direct the mayor, vote the city of Grand Prairie shares to provide consent to the board of Aquaterra declaring dividends with respect to the corporation's class D preferred shares and class H preferred shares and to provide for payment of such dividends on or prior to March 1st, 2013, notwithstanding the stipulations in articles eight and 10 of the USA. So we received a letter that uh, uh, informing us that the Equitable Board had declared both mandatory and discretionary dividends payable to shareholders this year. It's for the last year, actually. Um, a discretionary dividend of 2.5% of the value of all outstanding preferred shares um, uh, were, uh, I guess, uh, recommended. Discretionary dividends require unanimous shareholder consent. This motion gives Mayor Given, on our behalf, uh, I guess, the direction in terms of voting for those shares. Uh, the uh, letter also showed that we had mandatory, sh mandatory, uh, I guess, dividends of one one million six hundred eight thousand fifty dollars. Those are mandatory, and they came from, I guess, the when Equitor started, uh, giving uh, the city of Grand Prairie five percent of contributed assets at the time that uh, Equitor was incorporated. The discretionary uh, uh, dividends that I just mentioned, uh, in terms of the, the Equitor's board decision. Uh, come to a one million twenty nine thousand two hundred fifty dollars to the city of Grand Prairie. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councilor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Questions or comments? Yes. Councilor Rice. What do we have in the budget estimated? Yeah, actually, you asked. Uh, we asked uh, Mr. Anderson that, and uh, we're, it's about what we had in the budget. Very okay. close. Sure. Very close. If I remember correctly, it was like sixty dollars difference yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Well, I thought Susan might get to tell us good news. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a bit of a surplus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Of. Okay. Uh, any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. 
and that motion carries. Councillor Radburn, anything else from that set of two, two other Two other highlights that I would uh, share. Uh, first of all, we uh, um, received information that the uh, 2013 Citizen Satisfaction Survey uh, contract was going to Ipsos Reed. Uh, this is a survey that uh, cities undertaken every two years. Uh, talks about a number of issues, quality of life issues, and uh, communication, taxation, you name it, a broad range of questions. Uh, we use the survey as a key resource in the city's uh, citizen engagement program, and it does inform us for our business planning and strategic planning uh, priorities, so uh, we find it very useful. Uh, this will happen again, David, March. Typically, we've, uh, we, this will be our third, I believe, and we've done it a consistent time of year, and uh, it involves a phone survey of 400 residents. Thank Thanks you very much, Councillor Redmond. And secondly, the uh, council received a chambers, council chambers audio video upgrade, upgrade update. Uh, Sharp's uh, audio visual was the uh, highest ranked submission. Uh, and I believe actually it's, I think, a May timeframe. So hopefully these upgrades will be uh, completed uh, by May. And the money is coming from the corporate IT initiatives uh, capital budget. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Redburn. Uh, I believe that handled all of our committee business. We had no items of correspondence tonight, so that takes us to the delegation uh, delegation business. Um, I believe the uh, George Repco award was uh, was handled and presented. Um, the first, I guess, delegation was uh, Ms. Gao from Prida. Um, so uh, we'd look for a motion. Garrow, sorry, excuse me, Garrow. Uh, Councilor Monroe. Thanks, Mayor Given. I'll move that uh, we accept, uh, accept the Prida delegation for information. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. I'm looking for one more. Thank you, Council. And that motion carries. And then we had um, our second delegation, Councillor Rice. Uh, I would move that uh, the issue of a light at that particular uh, uh, easement to be referred to whatever we're calling public works next week, and that they prepare a report for uh, regarding the cost and the potential for a light installation at that location. Sure. Councillor Rice, I wonder, would you be willing to uh, um, maybe expand, broaden the scope a little bit, so the, a light and other options for yes. addressing graffiti in that area? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Just so it's broad to give council, or yep. admin as many options as possible. Councillor Gustafson? Thank you, thank you, Mary. Given um, last term we, we we started this graffiti program, um, and I'm not on protective services anymore. Just so I was wondering if somebody could enlighten me on where we're, where we stand with that graffiti program um, by email, if not tonight. Short. Okay. Brief. So an update on the graffiti program. I'm sure we can do that. And I see Director Walking nodding, Director Walker nodding his head. So we'll get an update on the graffiti wipeout program. And Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I as well like to have that update on the graffiti uh, program to see actually if we just supply gloves because I don't know if it should just be a protective service uh, area, community growth and making your community stronger and wiping it out quickly would be uh, very important. And uh, sometimes when they do it on culture stone and that, it'd be pretty hard to, to fix. But a lot of these fences and uh, power boxes, maybe the city can get after them more. I've noticed quite an increase in the last two years. And uh, you can go out in quite a few spots and see it. I mean, the trains are going to happen anywhere. But in our community, <coughs> there's lots. So I don't really know if gloves are working. And I don't know if it's just graffiti stay in protective service anymore. It should be maybe come to community growth or another area as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Council McLean. Uh, so Councillor Rice's motion was uh, to re essentially refer the issue of a light and other options uh, to d deter graffiti uh, in that specific uh, easement uh, to the appropriate standing committee. Yeah. Okay, uh, any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. Motion's carried. So I see Carl's still here. So Carl, it's going to one of our committees. We're going to talk about it more, um, but I imagine you may also hear from our administration in the interim as well. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, I believe that handled all of our delegation business, and we go to uh, council member reports. Um, Councilor Rice, do you want to speak about uh, providing AUMA update? I will. I attended a utility consumer advocate. Uh, board meeting. Uh, that organization uh, continues to monitor the progress 
on the implementation of the recommendations coming forward from the regulated rate review committee. As uh, I'm sure Council is aware, the government supported 31 of the recommendations and held off on several others. Uh, it's still rather vague as to what they're going to do with the 31 recommendations they accepted. So uh, continue to study that as it could have a huge impact on um, on the uh, um, the average citizen in Grand Prairie. Um, also continued work uh, through AUMA. Uh, with a grant given by the Minister of Environment to look at replacing all the street lights in Alberta with LED or similar lights that could cut the power costs of every municipality by as much as two thirds. So uh, that's kind of exciting. I attended the Mayor's Caucus, uh, put on in the MLA breakfast, uh, put on by uh, AUMA and facilitated the discussion and recommendation on the need for municipalities uh, to have the ability to expand the, the uh, ways that they can apply for water licenses. And that's it. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Councillor O'Toole, you had Disabled Transportation Society. Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, today we had our annual general meeting and we had an election for two new appointees for the board and uh, two reappointments. So I can proud to say that Jerry Napier is back and so is Keith Bennett. And we the two new appointees are Carol Ann Rutberg and Phyllis Cash. So they'll be taking part in, uh, in our March meeting and we'll appoint them to some opportunities and committees in that department. That's great. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Thank you. And uh, I don't think there are any other external agencies, boards, and commissions reports. Uh, and if there weren't, then we would go to Council Roundtable with Councillor Crookin. Thanks, Mayor Given. On February the 7th, I attended the Crime Prevention Awards of Appreciation and Success. Congratulations to uh, all the winners and a great job and a great evening. Karen Garapi and her team and a very nice uh, closing gift. I'll, I won't uh, be late for anything now with that nice clock. On February the 8th, I was in Fort St. John bringing greetings from uh, Mayor Given and Council at their Ice Carving Championship. And uh, I just couldn't get our swan uh, up there. Like uh, there's a Roger there that uh, recognized me from uh, our first time and he said what a great job we had on that swan on our very first trip. And uh, we, uh, <laughs> we did a good job then and we, we did a good job representing us this time too. So uh, they appreciate us coming up. On uh, February the 14th, I attended the Passion Heart uh, Award Luncheon, and congratulations again to all winners, and especially to, to uh, Jackie Aiken Kish for winning the Chris Henderson Award. On February the 15th, I attended the, uh, in Council Chambers here, the Grand Prairie Fire Department Awards and Medals presentation, and there is an awful lot of them, too many to mention, but uh, they were online. But uh, I want to mention one, and that's uh, to Chris Adams, voted by his peers as Firefighter of the Year. Good job, Chris, and uh, that's everything we're given. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Crowden. Councillor Rice? Uh, I want to uh, say how proud I am uh, that the city um, was awarded the Premier's Award for a Healthy Workplace. Uh, we were one of the five uh, in an award of merit. Uh, the, uh, it's part of the government of Alberta's government's Healthy You initiative, and it, in, it honors employers who encourage their staff to make healthy eating choices and incorporate daily physical activity into their workday. And the honorees were selected based on their strategies, initiatives, policies, and programs that promote support and enhance healthy workplaces and obviously the city recognizes that wellness initiatives in the workplace increase morale recruitment retention and staff engagement research has shown that when employees work with an organization that cares about their well-being they are more likely to contribute beyond expectations so uh, proud uh, of that award and congratulations mr. Sherbeck and all your staff 
I believe the only municipality recognized this year was some heavy company like uh, WestJet and, and some other yeah. well-known companies. So congratulations, Greg. Yeah. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Given. I attended the uh, 100th anniversary committee meeting and a subcommittee meeting. And I attended the Mighty Peace Watershed Alliance open house. And, and I just wanted to commend uh, Councillor Dan Wong on all his hard work he does there uh, looking after our most precious resource. Thank you, Don. Good, Dan, Dan, good job uh, looking after us there. And uh, I, spent, uh, I spent some time on our website uh, reporting potholes. So I'll be watching those potholes to see C how... Fix. You bet you. See, how, that's how it works. See, click, fix. So I fixed a lot of potholes last, last couple of weeks here, hopefully. And uh, I'm also excited to hear about uh, the annexation meeting that uh, happened today, the, uh, the progress report that that we'll hear and then hear in the near future how we're how we're making out with our neighbors all around us and uh, tomorrow i'll be attending the uh, growing the north conference uh, supper with the premier so thank you very much mayor given thanks councillor gustafson councillor wong yes thank you mayor given on tuesday february 5th i had my quarterly meeting with the city manager uh, we discussed many topics uh greg thank you for the updates uh, i think he was almost, uh, he almost checked off everything on my list from last time, so that was pretty pretty good. Um, February 7th, I was at the uh, Crime Prevention Evening of Success. Uh, February 8th, EMS Foundation Wine Fair. It's, that's always a great event, and it is a fundraiser for the EMS Foundation. On February 12th, the Wapiti Corridor Planning Society met with uh, some esteemed members from Environment and Sustainable Resource Development, Fisheries and Wildlife, and Alberta Land Management Departments uh, to get feedback on our Wapiti Corridor plan. Uh, February 13th, Mayor Given and I met with RCMP commanders to provide feedback on their strategic goals for the year. Uh, September, February 14th, uh, I attended the uh, annual Passionate Hearts Awards, and I want to also congratulate all the award winners. February 15th, the Grand Prairie Fire Department Awards and Medal presentation. Um, I was there as well. And again, congratulations to all the awards and medal winners. On Saturday, February 16th, I attended the Chinese New Year celebration at the Golden Age Center, hosted by the Chinese Association of Grand Prairie. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank President Guy Lee and his committee and, uh, and board of directors for all the good work that they do. I know they're uh, starting up their Chinese language school again. They had, they took a year off from that, trying to get instructors, and the program is up and running again, and it'll run for children ages 4 to 15. And that'll be held at the college. So if you're interested in learning Chinese, which is Mandarin Chinese, um, definitely get a hold of the association. Uh, finally, this morning, I was at the uh, annexation mediation meeting with the county and the city. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. As well as uh, February 8th, I was at DMS uh, annual wine fair and auction. Um, very excited to go there. This year, I actually, it was the first year in three years I didn't lose my booklet to know which wines I truly enjoyed. But the number one reason <laughs> to go to this event is to raise funds, and I believe they raised about 58000 this year, and last year was about forty. So they did a very, very good job. <laughs> And I also have to say kudos to all the directors on the on EMS um, board. And, of course, my wife's on there, Tina. So good job, you guys. Very good job. Um, as well, February 12th, I attended the Canadian Home Builders Association lunch. And I'm very proud of this. Um, they're expecting to do this every two months or four months. It's a good initiative by council. Council should pat itself on the back on this. Um, development permits since we got in council are now are 49 percent faster being developed and processed that's amazing news that's a big you got to congratulate development on that as well and that was a director of, of council that was speeded up uh, and then there was a question asked there about well it's got busy the last year how are you doing now and it was up about 25 percent and they're doing the same thing 49 percent faster and always looking to improve also, there was a question asked about hiring more inspectors. And of course, they're on top of it. And uh, there's looking at having a few more inspectors in the spring to move it forward as the economy's picking up. That's another council directive. Very good job, council, and to the city staff. And there were some good things about codes that were brought up, about new codes and, uh, 
uh, about pouring concrete in bl really cold weather and as a carpenter I know that there's been places where they poured it in minus 25, minus 30 and they pour took the forms off the next day and with very little rebar you know how much strength you got in that foundation, none. So uh, the codes are changing, they can't pour so in such cold weather and as well they're looking at if they're going to have a basement sitting in the winter all night or all winter in minus 30, 40 they're going to have to cap it and put heat in it. Uh, these are codes that are coming from Canada, Building Codes Canada. And um, so I think this is a very good initiative as it moves into the development uh, staff. Good job. Good kudos on the government notice in it. Number one investment for a family is their home. And if it's falling apart in the foundation, just imagine the cost. Uh, February 13th, I was at uh, Community Futures board meeting, our annual board meeting. Very well done. February 14th, I was at the uh, Seventh Annual Passionate Heart uh, Award lunch, and I was—I felt like at home there. It was so red and colorful, and uh, <laughs> very. But the main thing was people being awarded uh, the procedure and helping in the community for frontline workers. But it was very red in the room, and um, as well, I attended on February 15th for the GP Fire Department Award and Medal presentation. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, February 5th, I met with Debbie Normington, uh, Grand Spirit Foundation uh, General Manager on some uh, Grand Spirit business. The 7th, I also attended the Crime Prevention Evening of Appreciation and Success. On the 14th, I had two, two uh, uh, I guess commitments at, at noon. One was the Grand Prairie Regional Tourism Association <coughs> board meeting, where we uh, uh, looked at the uh, 2013 budget review. And then I whipped over and caught the last half of the Passionate Hearts Awards luncheon. Grand Prairie Fire Department Awards and Medals presentation on the 15th. Um, and on the 18th, uh, uh, Muskocipi Park Family Day activities. Uh, Don and I and uh, our grandchildren uh, took in the uh, activities uh, for an hour and a half at the uh, at Muskocipi Park and really appreciated the staff's uh, organizing and uh, delivery of uh, all the activities at uh, that event. Hugely successful, hundreds of people. Uh, I was telling uh, Mayor Given that, uh, you know, we could have used uh, a pavilion three times as large. And uh, we, still, we still would have been kind of sardined in there. But it just shows the, uh, the interest uh, of the park and the activities and uh, what a better way to spend Family Day. And uh, today I was part of the annexation mediation session as well. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. On the 6th of February, I attended a tender opening, and on the 7th, I attended a meeting, uh, Community Action to End Poverty, and I want to thank Lisa Watson for inviting me. Uh, I asked to be part of a committee that uh, will be representing the city on a number of areas, and uh, so I'm with that. Uh, it also a very busy day. I attended the Philip J. Curry meeting, and there was just some regular RFP negotiation type things we discussed there. Later that day, I uh, filled your role and gave greetings on behalf of the mayor and council to the crime prevention six annual evening of appreciation and success. Very well turned out event. On the 11th, I also attended the park pavilion to visit the uh, presentation on the Peace Watershed. And I got to admit that four o'clock, the place was almost completely packed. Lots of interest there. On the 12th, I attended the library board meeting. And uh, shortly after that meeting, I attended the MMA, uh, or Combative Sports Commission Training Clinic. And that was for the volunteers that will be coming up for this uh, event that's going to be held on Thursday and Friday. Uh, the weigh-in is on Thursday, and the event is actually held on Friday at the uh, jackpot bar and grill. On the 14th in the morning, I woke up fairly early and attended the morning mixer at Rainbow Automotive and met the new owners and some uh, chamber members there as well. On the 7th, once again, I was fulfilling your role as mayor and gave uh, deputy mayor and gave uh, presentation and speech to the Passionate Heart Awards luncheon. And once again, I want to thank Lisa Watson uh, for doing a great job there. On the 15th, I attended the archives meeting, and on later that day, I attended the Grand Prairie Fire Department Awards 
And uh, like was said in the media and around the table today, uh, very deserving awards and uh, kudos to all those that uh, got the awards. Uh, there was also this, the Diamond Jubilee Awards presented by uh, our MP Chris Workington. And I also want to thank uh, MLA uh, Everett McDonald and Minister Wayne Drysdale for attending there as well. Uh, I had also want to thank Justin Monroe for taking over my role of opening tenders that day, or opening tenders. On the 16th, I attended a lifetime award from the Kinsman uh, for Edith Gillette and a proclamation of Kins Day of the 17th of this following week. And uh, today I attended the annual DDS meeting, Disabled Transport Society, and uh, Growing the North meeting. I was there for an hour this afternoon before the meeting that we have here. Taste of the North. There's communities represented from Valley View, uh, Beaver Lodge, and I'm trying to think where else. Uh, the Honey Place, Flair, and Guy. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor Tool. Councillor Monroe. Thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, I also attended the Home Builders Association uh, technical luncheon with uh, Councillor McLean, and uh, I believe that uh, most of the home builders that were there are uh, uh, quite thrilled, actually, that there's been a reduction in the uh, permit uh, times. And uh, as I understand it, the, they're hoping that those times will, they'll still be uh, able to improve upon them. So, uh, so that's uh, that's really good. Uh, attended briefly the fire department uh, awards and medals presentation. I think everyone. Uh, uh, most things have been covered off there and uh, uh, also did the uh, tender opening for the destruction of the bleachers at the South Bear Creek uh, later that day. Uh, did the Rotary Ski Weekend in Jasper and that was a, that was a f family day event for us and then the annexation meeting today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Uh, Councillor Rice. Not sure if this one should be to Councillor Monroe, but um, okay, so those bleaches were destroyed, obviously, because they were became a safety hazard. Were they their bleaches or ours? And if they're ours, will there be something in the budget to replace them? Uh, maybe I'll direct that to the community living director, Ms. Roth. Your Worship, there is uh, there was actually three tenders. Some were some were for uh, field uh, uh, upgrades and replacement or repairs. Uh, destruction of bleachers and also replacement of bleachers. Those were three tenders that were issued and all came back at roughly the same time. Okay, okay. thanks very much. Um, so uh, my opportunity, I'll uh, try to be brief. I, on Monday, Tuesday, February 5th, I attended a Real Talk presentation. That was a session put on uh, for city employees. Uh, our staff brought in a facilitator who was able to uh, work with our staff to uh, bone up some of their skills on uh, uh, internal relationships and working relationships. I think uh, these types of events and programs are why the City of Grand Prairie uh, won our Healthy Workplace Award. Uh, it shows that the City of Grand Prairie is concerned about employees in all aspects of their life, of their life, and that enables them to uh, be better employees. Uh, so I want to thank city staff for um, uh, providing that sort of opportunity to our, our colleagues. On Wednesday the 6th, I attended uh, here at City Hall at a preliminary meeting for a potential Sport Council Steering Committee. Uh, a number of uh, interested parties turned out from a variety of different sport organizations, uh, other municipal governments, and uh, private sector. So that was uh, encouraging to see. And then on Thursday the 7th, uh, I headed down to... Um, Edmonton for the uh, Northern Alberta Mayors and Reeves Caucus, um, hosted by the City of Edmonton, Mayor Mandel. Uh, the focus of the agenda, the first half of the day was on seniors issues, um, and the Associate Minister of Seniors for the Alberta Government, uh, the Honorable George Vanderberg, was there to present. Um, he uh, presented about a new program that the government's going to be launching, uh, I believe effective with this budget, that allows seniors to defer their property taxes. Um, and so uh, seniors who are currently living in their home who are finding property taxes uh, to be a difficulty or a burden have the ability to essentially uh, defer those payments until such time as they sell their house in the future. Basically addresses uh, the uh, situation that many seniors have where they are house rich and cash poor I guess is how the saying goes 
um, and allows those seniors to live in their own home longer than they might be able to otherwise. Um, in those situations, the government of Alberta will forward the property taxes to the municipality and then uh, will be responsible for uh, collecting those um, uh, when it comes to. Um, there is also a presentation on uh, global age-friendly cities and then a uh, very interesting presentation from the University of Alberta uh, on their planning program. They're uh, looking at launching a planning program based on the feedback of municipal governments across the province. Um, and, uh, and Dr. Robert Summers, the director of that planning program, um, highlighted that they're interested in opportunities for internships. So I gave my card, and we probably have some of those around here. Um, and he also highlighted that they're looking at doing partnerships with educational institutions. And on his slide was a picture of Grand Prairie Regional College. So I took that to be a fairly uh, uh, good indication that they're looking at our region uh, and region in the north for potential partnerships uh, for this planning program. So obviously a good thing uh, knowing how in demand uh, professional planners are for municipalities. Um, uh, the following week I attended uh, in Edmonton for the AUMA Mayor's Caucus. I was there uh, for the um, MLA's breakfast, had an opportunity to sit with the government whip uh, Steve Young uh, and uh, discuss some of the government program. Uh, council needs to know that Councillor Rice uh, earned her uh, three years of uh, salary and wages. Uh, by being uh, the only person in the crowd that could directly challenge the Minister of Municipal Affairs when he was on the podium uh, to ask him when the government would take the, take, uh, the step to uh, intervene when municipalities are unable to reach agreements. Um, and Councillor Rice suggested that at some point that needs to happen. And uh, the Minister was taken aback and laughed and suggested that if Councillor Rice was 15 years younger, and then he stopped, and so I'm not sure what he was going to say, <laughs> but there was nobody else in the crowd that could have asked such a direct question and, and really suggested that the government needed to do that. And so, uh, Councillor Rice, I just wanted to make sure that all your colleagues know um, the good job that you do for us. Um, the next day was the uh, Mayor's Caucus meetings for uh, municipalities of Grand Prairie size. Um, agenda items included uh, police funding. Um, as well as uh, the Municipal Government Act review, which are both uh, very significant issues that we've discussed at Council. And good to see that our um, Provincial Association is focused on those issues. I was there for some of the discussion about around police funding the day before with some of the smaller municipalities, and I was surprised at the number of communities uh, that don't currently pay, um, a number of urban municipalities that don't currently pay who understand that it's a reasonable thing to do. Um, and so that was uh, that was good to see. That was a con uh, something I was unclear about. So I think there's largely support across uh, the majority of, of urban municipalities across the province that that system needs to change. Um, and finally today, uh, I was at the annexation mediation meeting as mentioned by some other members of council. And this afternoon I met with the uh, Aquaterra board and the Minister of Environment and Sta Sustainable Resource Development uh, to talk about a number of Aquaterra items including their long-term diversion license which council uh, knows they've been lobbying for as well for a, a long time. And I believe that that was all the items. And if there's nothing else, then we'll call our meeting adjourned.